Nina, I'm just gonna share this with the audience. I have never met a person in my entire life more passionate about effective meetings than you. Uh, when I do the pre-work for this training, I ask people questions and Nina gave me the most elaborate list of ideas and suggestions and, and things of that nature. You're really an expert on meetings. Hi, this is Nina Sunday. This week I have a bonus episode for you, my conversation as a guest on the Training Unleashed podcast with Evan Hackle about leading effective meetings. Poor meeting management comes up so frequently as a workplace bugbear that I designed and rolled out a managing meetings workshop. Evan asked me a ton of in-depth questions about meeting best practices, extracting gems from my experiences leading workshops inside organisations to improve meeting behaviour. Now it's over to Evan Hackle to introduce me as his guest on the Training Unleashed podcast. Happy listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Training Unleashed. Today, we're going to talk about something I think people love to talk about, excuse me, love to complain about, and that is how to have an effective meeting. And I think no one complains about an effective meeting. They complain about the fact that meetings bore them to death and they hate them. We, of course, have the perfect guest. But before we get into introducing the guest, I want to thank our friends at C-Suite TV and C-Suite Radio for sponsoring. On behalf of Training Unleashed, I want to welcome you all to the show and remind everyone we're now on YouTube. And if you go to YouTube, it's Training Unleashed Network. And of course, you can go to our website, trainingunleashed.net. Today, I have Nina Sunday with me. She's coming to us from Australia. Uh, she's the founder of Brain Power Training. She is a certified professional speaker, which I'll tell you is a big, big, big deal. And she has two podcasts of her own, but she's really a communication expert. And so, Nina, I'm going to start off with kind of an interesting question because I've been thinking about this question the whole time. And it's not specifically about meetings, which I know is your true expertise, but I think it'd be great to start off with, why is your company called Brain Power? Well, it's, it's how it started. My, the first 10 years in business, my, I was focused on speed reading. I was niched in speed reading and memory. And then I had a business angel come on board and we decided to uh, uh, expand the business, grow the business, and we wanted to rename it. And so Brain Power uh, gave us the opportunity to be more than just speed reading and to work with the, you know, uh, upgrade the brain power of people that do our courses. So we moved from speed reading into all the other soft skills areas. So, you know, that, productivity, that, communication. That, that That is fascinating. Let's get, let's get to meetings. Yeah. People hate them. I mean, they do. They dread them. They talk about them behind their back, et cetera. Um, Let's just start with the root causes. What, why are meetings, in your opinion, from your experience, ineffective or, 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 or unenjoyable, maybe? Well, number one, they don't, people do not think about the, the meeting experience of their participants. And so they're not thinking, oh, I should get the agenda to them ahead of time so they can prepare, so they know if uh, they have to contribute. And that's when I ask people, what I, I survey them before I do a workshop, what's the biggest bugbear? And they'll say, no agenda, or the agenda arrives only at the meeting. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to say I've been guilty of that, uh, <laughs> as, as many people do. Um, so what advice do you give to the people? Cause I mean, look at, this is a group of trainers, HR professionals, operational people, this audience does meetings. So what advice do you give them to let, maybe divide it into two things? What is the basic, simple advice you can give people to take their meetings to the next level? And then we'll go to what's the advanced advice to the people that are really committed. But what are the simple things that people can do to make their meetings better? I believe the one thing that will really shift how meetings are run is for the agenda when you're, if you're the meet discussion leader preparing the agenda, prepare it in a way that you, you schedule everything that everybody needs to listen to or participate in at the stop 
at the top and then let people peel away and leave the meeting as they are no longer required. Because a number of people say, I sit there until the end because I don't want to be rude and say, uh, can I go now? Just make it that it's phased attendance, that everybody's at the start and then people peel away and then you're going to have greater productivity and people will be so grateful. You know, I've never heard that idea before. And that's cool. I like it. Keep going. Let's hear some more. <laughs> number number two, I've had clients who sent, I, I always ask for, send me an agenda ahead of time. And I noticed that on the agenda, the discussion leader was also the chairperson, was also the minute taker. And I went, why are you multitasking? How can you do all three uh, really well? I say, always have a separate minute taker, but the minute taker is not a passive clerk, as we say, not just taking notes. Their role is to be proactive and listen and make sure that every action item is captured. And I've seen minutes where the, the issue was discussed, but no action was recorded. I can see that they probably just got distracted by something else. That's where the minute taker can go, um, excuse me, uh, what specifically uh, has to be done about this issue? And it's this what specifically or who specifically is the main question that minute takers can be asking. I, I love that. I think a lot of times meetings do have discussions, but not clarity. So that's a big, big one. I'm going to ask this question because the AI minute takers are real. A lot of people will do them. In fact, I just had a meeting yesterday where someone's AI note taker came into the meeting 10 minutes before they did because they were running late. <laughs> what do you think of AI note takers? Um, I mean, I assume that somebody could be responsible to ask that important question who's not literally taking the minutes. Are they good or, or they? is it really much better to have a real minute taker? Well, you you would need, you need a human to actually go through and extract the bits that you want because the AI note taker from from the I I don't use it myself but if I if I want a transcription I, I often will have my uh, dictation app on my phone going for certain parts and I I believe that a minute taker should work with a transcription because they can then just very quickly uh, fast forward through what actually was said and then extract the key ideas. The minute taker has to then maybe you bullet do it as bullets or dot points. Um, and I also believe that minute takers should really try and get their minutes uh, put together within the same hour or so of running the meeting. Because if you understand the curve of forgetting, within two days, we order, most humans forget two thirds of what they experienced two days before. So you've got to start doing your minutes same day or you'll forget the detail. And also then, then you're not so relied on the transcription. You're, it's transcription plus memory. And your job is to just extract the key points and use white space, not make it like, I call it a like a brick of words, a sea of words. You want it so people can see easily uh, through, you know, quick bullets, Oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. Who does what by when? Okay. So let's let's go back to the leader. So we got the minute taker role done. And you've got a person that's facilitating the meeting. What You described three roles. What were the those? Chair. The chair. The discussion leader, the chair, and the minute taker. And then so you've what got is the difference between the chair and the discussion leader? Well, a lot of discussion leaders don't think there is a, a need for another chair, but the chair is like the observer that sees the gaps, that sees the patterns. And the chair can also, well, I'm going to backtrack a little, agenda items should be have a time allocated. So the chair can also be a bit of a timekeeper, although you can also have a time keep, separate timekeeper role, but usually the chair can do that. And they can also make sure that there's conversational equality. In other words, there comes a point, maybe when you're leading to uh, a decision, to actually make sure that everybody's opinion has been heard and we haven't got the 
introvert deep thinkers sitting on their ideas you want you want all the ideas to come out because research shows that if you have conversational turn taking in a meeting th those teams are more effective <laughs> they do they do could you maybe talk a little bit about the different types of meetings cuz some meetings are like can be 10 minutes just give everyone up to date reporting in some meetings are brainstorming some meetings are like annual planning meetings can you just talk about the different kinds of meetings and, and what and how they should be run differently? Well, of course, a, a brainstorm meeting, definitely you want conversational equality, but you've got to be careful because brainstorming can, um, uh, can actually, people can start to harbour their own idea and it becomes like a, a banner that they're waving. With brainstorming, I, I there's a, there's a little, um, matrix that I recommend, which is dividing your ideas into low effort and high effort and low impact and high impact. And the most doable ideas are low effort and high impact. And the second doable ideas are high effort, high impact, which might take longer and might need more agreement uh, wider in the organization. And if you get to high effort, low impact, you don't want to do that idea at all. And I've yeah. been in um, I've been in committees where one person harbored this one thing that I thought this is going to be high effort and I cannot really see a benefit, but it was his idea and he was he was he was running with it, <laughs> but it never it never actually came to fruition. No, I, but that's I mean, that's brainstorming. You've got you've got meetings. My what doesn't happen in agendas is people often list topics but they don't list the question or the decision that they're there to discuss. They might say, um, uh, you know, oh, look, for one, for one of a better one, paying for tea and coffee, because I yeah. know one company that decided to make, make uh, employees pay for their own tea and coffee and biscuits. Um, deciding whether to charge for uh, tea and coffee, that's the decision. Put that in the agenda, not uh, tea and coffee. So a lot yeah. of people just name the topic, but they don't name they don't, the issue. They don't, they don't name the outcome, the outcome, the need to be desired. That, yeah. that's, that's a good yeah. point. Hmm. So have you heard of the concept of a stand-up meeting? And what do you think? Oh, yeah, I often recommend that. that. Sometimes they call it a huddle. And I know, for example, the Apple store, If you, I've been there at 9 a.m. in the morning, and they're all in, in small teams having their stand-up meeting uh, for about 10 minutes before the start of the day. A stand-up meeting is great because people won't sit back and relax and it won't go on forever because people want to just get to the to the nub of the of the of the meeting and then move on. So stand-up meetings are great. Yeah. That, that, that will shorten a meeting. There are lots of ways to shorten a meeting. Uh what another way to shorten a meeting is it could be the chair or it could be the discussion leader might, instead of people all expressing their opinion and going on and on and on, you can actually gauge the temperature of the meeting by saying, look, look let me just have a quick indication. Who thinks that when we do go for a vote, we will probably say yes. And if everybody's hand goes up, you say, well, why don't we vote now? <laughs> you can save a lot of time. So it's up to it's up to the chair or the discussion leader. The chair can suggest that, look, Look, I think uh, let's just find out how people are likely to vote, ask the question, and then suddenly you've cut off all that time. That's that's great. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I would love it if you could maybe share with me a case study of a company that was like, not the name of the company, because that's really irrelevant, that was completely dysfunctional, no one wanted to go to meetings, that you worked with, helped with, convert, what the key things were, and then what the result was. Well, i i asked I asked them to send me. Uh, I asked them. I asked the company to for each person to send me a copy of minutes that they'd either written or and compiled or received. And it the coordinator decided that they wouldn't do that. They would just send me a set of meetings from one person, a, a person who 
as I saw, was multitasking, was being chair and discussion leader and minute taker. And I could see where there were there were so many holes in the process. In other words, they'd be discussing something, uh, but there was no action. There were so many things where it was a question whether we do something, but the, the column for what's the action or who's doing uh, taking an action, or it might be left to, oh, the, the so-and-so team's going to do that. Well, there's a there's a principle called the au pair principle, one person ultimately responsible. You can't say that team is going to do it because then nobody's going to do it. You need to actually allocate one person ultimately responsible. So I saw there were all these issues and discussions and topics, but no, only a, a third of them actually had the name of the person doing the action. And I asked the coordinator, will this person be at the meeting? Because you sent this to me with a view to handing it out to everybody. I, I don't have to say what the holes are. The holes are pretty obvious. But will that person be in the room? Because they would, one, we can't talk about someone's style of writing minutes without them being in the room. Or he said, oh, I want them to be in the room. Yeah, well, you want them to be, but will they be? As it turned out, they weren't. And that was the one person they wanted this workshop for, but I could tell there was a lot of ego involved. This person was obviously a top dog in the company, and that's great because, they're, you know, they're the rainmaker. But at the same time, they probably could do with a dash of humility to understand that maybe everything they do isn't um, turning to gold. <laughs> And maybe people are a bit bored with their meetings because it's all they're they're doing most of the talking and they're even doing the minute taking. Well, I always do a, an online survey that's anonymous. And I, I realize now that I probably need to tell them that it will be shared with everyone else. Because sometimes people say things and I go, well, I don't actually include it. You know, I, I'll put it up uh, in big print on like a poster on the wall for people to see it. Sometimes I'll remove it because I go, they'll know who that is and they might be embarrassed by oh, this what wasn't they said. an This wasn't an open-ended survey. That, you know, this was, this is like, you know, how to increase sales. Here are 10 ideas that I got from the group, which, you know, everyone gets two votes, pick two. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, so it, it wasn't, you know, you know, I look at I've worked with clients and done 360s and things like that, which yeah, yeah. can, you know, sometimes need to be uh, wordsmith. Um, but so, Nina, I'm just going to share this with the audience. I have never met a person in my entire life more passionate about effective meetings than you. Uh, when I do the pre-work for this training, I ask people questions and Nina gave me the most elaborate list of ideas and suggestions and, and things of that nature. You're really an expert on meetings. And I think the audience would love to know more because you're in Australia, you know, about your company and how do you work with companies that are, let's say, in North America? Um, and then we'll, of course, get you know, after that, we'll get to your, to your offer. Well, that's really easy. I'm a certif twice certified virtual presenter. I've got a setup a video room here. I can pull the, the uh, flip chart around and I can do it live. I can be standing up and have uh, a flip chart behind me. I don't have to have a slideshow the entire time or I can run the slideshow in the background on my, this is a real background, not a virtual one. That's my TV. Um, yeah. But I can run the slideshow on the TV, but I can still be in the screen and have that one-on-one -on -one connection with people. We can do polls. We can do breakout rooms. So I have a two-hour uh, essential meeting, essential leading of effective meetings uh, remote workshop that I run periodically. And I can do it exclusive for a team and then I can customise it. We can do an online survey ahead of time and work out the, the real topics that people want to want to focus on in, in that two hours. In a in a face-to-face I am sometimes over in, in North America and Europe. So when that happens, I've delivered um, sales training over in the UK, for example. Uh, so I get overseas about once a year. So if we align it with a date that I'm already going to be there, I can work one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one to uh, face-to-face -face in person.
in your workplace. So contact oh. me at Nina Sunday, Nina at Nina Sunday.com. By the way, great email, a, a great email address. Give me your email address one more time. Nina, N-I-N-A, at Nina Sunday.com. Yeah, really great. Really, I, lo I love the email. Um, I want to share my number one tip on meetings right now, because I think this is important. Please do. And that is to have a conversation with the team about how meetings can be more effective. And there is no better way to do that than to have somebody like Nina, doesn't have to be Nina, but Nina's pretty good at this, who can help facilitate the discussions on how to have effective meetings and how to make the meeting more effective because you know there's i don't know if einstein really said this but the the saying goes the definition of sanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results and if you can bring in somebody with outside expertise to help facilitate and train people on effective meetings you're going to improve your meetings so i i just wanted to in in one regard point out the importance of having this conversation and the other, you know, that Nina might be like the right person because of her background and her expertise. But um, Nina, you have an offer for everyone. And if you would kindly share what your offer is, I would appreciate that. Yes, indeed, Evan. Um, I have a, a, a little mini book that will summarize a lot of key ideas that we didn't even get the chance to discuss today on ways that you can improve meetings, shortening them, making them more collaborative. And just different uh, things, like I mentioned at the top, which is phasing attendance. And honestly, that will make such a huge difference. I do have my business website for Brain Power Training. is It's in Australia, so it's got a .au on the end. So it's brainpowertraining.com.au. And that's where you'll find all the uh, signature programs, including a Leading Effective Meetings. But if you want the mini book, just email me at nina at ninasunday.com because that's easy to remember. Okay, that is definitely so it's brainpowertraining.com.au for your company website. Nina at Nina Sunday.com dot com for the email address. Yeah. And by the way, because I have the list, she has a lot more to talk about on meetings than we have covered. So I would definitely go and take advantage of getting the free book for sure. Nina, we always end the meeting with one tip. If you had one tip to share with the audience, what would that one tip be? When you do your agenda, do an agenda with three columns and on the left will be the, the topic and the uh, a time allocation. The middle column will be the decision and the, the points that you want to uh, raise around that topic. And on the right-hand side, any specific participant that uh, is likely to be called upon for their opinion about that topic. And then they know to be prepared to make a contribution at the meeting. Great tip. Great tip. I like that. That's a great format. Hi, Nina Sunday here again. I trust you enjoyed this episode from Evan Hackler's podcast, Training Unleashed, and discovering tactics to improve meetings in the workplace. You can find the Training Unleashed podcast at trainingunleashed.net or via your favourite podcast app, Spotify, Apple, C-Suite Radio. Links are in the show notes. Until next time, enjoy good things.